I'm the uh, Director of Safety and Standardization at 764. And I, today, will be giving you a brief on risk management. So real quick, it's been a pretty long two hours. Everyone stand up real quick. Stand up, shake it off. Good news is we got two more briefs. This one and one more, and then lunchtime. All right, I want you to sit down if you're a risk manager. It's a trick question, everyone can sit down. All right, guys. Good morning. All right, so risk manager, risk to mission, risk to force, and risk to self. These are the references that probably nobody will ever look up. But if you want to, risk management, Google it. You'll find these sources, plenty of information. All right, risk versus risk management, some definitions. So risk, the probability and severity of loss or adverse impact from exposure to various hazards. And then risk management. Risk management is going to be a safety tool. It's how we minimize the probability or severity of risk. So every single day, as Marines, we should be utilizing our risk management tool to decrease the probability or decrease the severity of risk we face every day. So what is risk management? I'm not going to read the board. Uh, the items I have highlighted in bold are some things I think it's worth knowing. Uh, so what risk management is not. So it's not about avoiding risk. Inherently, there is risk in what we do. We are Marines. There is going to be risk in the jobs we, we, we have. Uh, whether you're flying or you're doing administrative work, site support, every single day you're going to face risk, on deployment especially. So we don't avoid it. We, just minimi we minimize the probability and the severity. Risk management is not a fail-safe process. It's not an excuse to violate the law, policies, directives, or procedures. And it's not a replacement for sound TTPs and rehearsals. What risk management is? Once again, I'm not going to read everything, but it's a mindset. All right? Something you need to practice every single day, whether you are a PFC, a full bird colonel, or general, you need to come every day to work with a mindset that you're going to minimize that day's risk to prevent hazards from occurring in your workplace uh, to stay safe. So uh, why risk management? Does anybody want to offer a reason why we utilize risk management? Anybody? Risk management because risk is in everything that we always do on a day-to-day -day basis. Absolutely. That's a good question. Good answer. I love this picture. Every one of his pictures is amazed that this guy is actually about to fall on his face. Except for the photographer. He's just going at it. So why the Marine Corps uses risk management? So as a force, big picture Marine Corps, it's combat readiness. That's all the Marine Corps cares about. Combat readiness. Making sure you are ready to go to combat every single day to fight that night uh, in your job at MOS. Why we care as a unit. Uh, inherently, we, we know you. We know the Marines. We work there every single day. And we actually care about your well-being. Uh, so we want you to stay safe. Um, and the moral of the story is you are not easily replaced. You know, I think people kind of joke around and say that any Marine can do any job. It's not really true. It's not that easy to get a Marine to replace you. So we need you to be prepared, safe, ready to go every single day to do your job. Um, so some humbling numbers real quick. So red threat versus blue threat. Red threat is, being, is combat. You are killed in action, uh, killed by the enemy. Blue threat, you, are, you, you die on the job doing your routine job, on duty, off duty. Um, so the top side is, is Navy, not Marine Corps, just Navy. So Navy in Desert Shield Storm, uh, 24 Class A mishaps, and 15 deaths during that operation in aviation. Six combat losses and six deaths. Since 9-11, in Navy, Navy aviation only, we've had 193 Class A mishaps, resulting in 101 deaths. We've had one KIA in Naval aviation. Marine Corps, just in 2020, blue threats last year, Class A mishaps, two of them, two deaths in Class A mishaps last year, 50 deaths on duty and off duty. Two killed in action just in 2020. And this year, that's not a mistake. So this year, the last four, last seven, sorry, eight days, we had seven deaths due to blue threats. Marines on and off duty, these are all PMV driving off base deaths. So this is why we utilize risk management. So the risk management process, the three, four, five process. So there are three levels. These are the amount, amount of time you have to plan for risk mitigation. Uh, whether it's time critical, is, is right now happening right in front of you. It is deliberate. Maybe it's happening, something you do that day. It's a, it's a flight event. You have some time to flight plan. Or it's a PT session you're doing the next morning. 
uh, or in depth. Maybe it's something the Marine Corps is doing big picture, a, co a combat deployment, um, or maybe just long-term operations. Principles. So these are the four principles I want every risk manager, so all of you in the crowd, to kind of live by when it comes to risk mitigation. So number one, that accept no unnecessary risk. All right. Anticipate and manage risk by planning. Make risk decisions at the right level. Accept risks only when the benefits outweigh the cost. Uh, we'll go a little deeper into all this in a little bit. And then finally, the actual process of risk management, the five-step process. Um, something you guys probably have already seen before, but you can identify and assess the hazards. You're gonna make risk decisions based on those hazards you identified. You're gonna make controls. So how are you gonna mitigate those risks that you identified? And then you're gonna supervise. And then you do it all over again. You're gonna keep on doing it until the job is done. All right, three levels. Oh, that's fancy. Okay, so uh, going from in-depth to time critical. In-depth, you were thinking big heads working, you know, headquarters Marine Corps at the Pentagon, people sitting around a round table and discussing long-term operations and how they can mitigate threats and risks uh, during those long-term operations. So they're gonna develop some publications, they're gonna develop some procedures, they're gonna provide instructions, they're gonna, they're gonna provide you PPE, uh, all the things you need to have training programs in order to do your jobs and do it safely. Uh, and they're gonna sit around and, and in depth, think about all the risks that are associated with your job. Deliberate. This is something you probably see more in, in your level of, uh, of action. So let's go with the, the flight schedule for us, 764. So you have a flight the next morning and you're going somewhere, you're going to do some deliberate planning the day prior to figure out what you're doing, where you're going, and what the risks are for that day, whether it's weather or it's going to be the actual events you're doing, uh, the passengers you're carrying in the back of your aircraft, uh, who, or who you're flying with. So for deliberate planning, you use planning itself. You use SOPs. You're going to use your TTPs, your briefings, your COs, guidance. Uh, on the job training, your maintenance, your skills you've developed over time, your experience uh, on your job. And then finally, uh, quality assurance uh, as well to help you out making the deliberate safety plan. And then time critical, this is what we deal with every single day. Uh, so who utilized time critical risk management today to get here? I bet every single one of you did. Every single one of you last night saw the LOI, you said, hey, I gotta be here at 7.30 in the morning, and you probably figured out, hey, I need to probably leave my house at a certain time to make it here safely. Uh, and that is time critical risk management. Um, so using checklists, using what's different today strategies, using equipment system figurative equipment you have available at the time, um, and just real time thought analysis. Um, as far as the, the, the ability to, to use the process, time critical risk management uses all three levels. So you have got all the benefits and resources of the in depth planning the guys at the Pentagon who made the original uh, risk assessments, but deliberate planning from the night prior, and then that day, that real-time time critical planning. You have all those resources. So back to the four principles. So accepting no unnecessary risks. Uh, basic common sense. If you don't have to make your job harder, don't do it. If it don't, don't make your job more risky just because it looks cool. Do the safest routine you can do to, to accomplish your job efficiently and safely. Anticipate and manage risk by planning. Once again, common sense. So no one's gonna wake up one day and just wing it and say, hey, I'm gonna go fly my airplane across the country into Alaska and see what happens. You are going to do some planning for that uh, because if you just wing it, more than likely bad things are gonna happen. So accept risks when benefits outweigh the cost. So we do this a lot. Uh, basically every deployment you've ever been on, we are, we are taking risks and we are weighing those risks and saying, hey, the, the reward is worth it. We understand that people are gonna get hurt, people may die, uh, but we're going to go out there and do our mission because we have to. And then the last principle is making the uh, risk decision at the right level. Uh, probably one of the more, more important principles, so having some self-awareness, knowing who that person is. Uh, whether it, this person has the authority to make that decision, so in our case at squadron level, uh, the command officer is sign or schedule. You know, he, he is the person who designated to sign and make that flight illegal, uh, not myself. Uh, who has the maturity and experience? So maybe you know, having a, a gang of Lance Corporals making safety decisions uh, for an event may or may not be the right call. You know, if it's two Lance Corporals making a PT plan, sure, I could work, but they probably should have some supervision as well. Uh, who has the on-scene knowledge? You know, in the squadron level for us, you know, maybe if we're having a maintenance issue or having some maintenance problems and we need someone on downstairs to make a decision, maybe it could be someone in QA or maybe the master gun, someone who has the experience to make that safe and right call. 
Uh, in the end, who's going to pay? Who's going to pay the bill at the end of the day? Who's going to be the one left in charge or left responsible in the event of mishap occurs? That's probably the person who should be making that safety call. All right, and finally, the, uh, the five-step process. I've lost my clicker. All right, so first of all, that, so identifying hazards. Pretty common sense. So you take an activity, and you should sit down and think about for a few minutes what all the risks are for that activity. Assessing hazards. Once you have identified those hazards that you have uh, identified prior, I want you to sit down again, and I want you to say, hey, what is the probability and severity of those, ha those risks occurring? So let's take today, for example. I think we're actually do that. Um, so, so bits, back in the safety, stand down. What is the risk of having a bits? Someone give me anything. Perfect. I thought that would happen. That's what happened here. There we go. Oh, I lost it. COVID. COVID-19. So we're going to sit down. Actually, before I even go further, has anyone seen this worksheet before? Has anyone not seen this worksheet before? OK, this is a risk assessment matrix. So if you are a NCO or above, this is something you should be very, very familiar with. All right, this is a document you should be using every single day. Maybe you have a major event occurring in your, your job, your office, your squadron, uh, in order to identify and minimize risks. So on the very top side, you have probability. <coughs> and you're running from left to right, from A to E, you have basically the, the different levels of probability, from frequent, so basically I'd say above 80%, so eight out of 10 times is gonna occur, to uh, unlikely, I'd say that's probably about below, below 10%. Uh, so every one in 10 times. On the left side, you have severity, from cash traffic, loss of life, loss of asset, loss of mission readiness, loss of unit readiness, to uh, negligible. You know, it really has no effect in your day-to-day. -day. You're just like, hey, that happened, probably after action, and then move on. Uh, where those two uh, slides, or slides interact, basically, where they meet in the middle, is gonna determine your level of risk. So you have everything from the red, extremely high level of risk, to uh, level four, extremely low in the green. Um, orange is high, yellow is moderate, or medium. So for COVID-19, so I sat down a couple days ago and I said, you know, we're doing it back in the saddle and one of our biggest risks to this you know, activity, it could be COVID-19. Um, if we were to do nothing, so no controls, no risk mitigation, I determined that COVID-19 is a, a level three, a medium risk, uh, based on how easy it transmits, uh, what would happen to you if you get COVID-19, what happened to our unit readiness if you get COVID-19, uh, and how far it gets spread. Uh, so once again, this is no controls, just hey, come into work, we have 1,500 people in this theater. No one's wearing masks. We're eating chow. We're hanging out. We're you know going to the head together as groups. We're taking breaks and high fiving everyone. There's no anything. Where are that? So at that point, I have to make a risk decision. All right, I have to start implementing some controls. So I'm taking COVID-19. I'm saying, hey, what can we do based off of the guidance I've been given from Bar 4 Res, the guidance I've been given from my command, uh, what I've seen in the news, what I know from publications about COVID-19, uh, what can I do to mitigate and provide some controls uh, to minimize the effects of, of COVID-19? So I'm going to minim I'm going to activate some controls. I'm going to say, hey, we're going to wear masks. We're going to have essential personnel only coming to the BITS uh, brief. We're going to do a virtual brief as well. So not everyone's going to be in this theater. We're going to uh, minimize contact. We're going to enhance social distancing. We're going to sit every other row and 60 apart minimum from each other. And based off of those controls that I've implemented, I'm going to say, hey, the threat, there's still a threat there. It's, it's still present, but it's decreased. It's lower now. And I'm going to accept that lower risk in order to have this event, because I believe the benefits of having this event outweigh the risks of getting COVID at this point, based off this level. And then finally, we're going to supervise. We're going to say, hey, what worked, what didn't work? You know, if we leave tomorrow and we all get COVID, it probably didn't work out and we need to figure out something else for next time. Um, but I'm going to make sure these controls I've implemented are actually be happening. So we are all staying distance apart. We all are wearing our masks. Um, and we are going to utilize the, the, the uh, virtual briefing for everyone else who couldn't come today. Um, and that's important that I'm not stopping at this point. So I know right here it's pretty linear. But it's, it's actually, it's a, it's a circle. So I'm going to supervise and I'm going to keep on changing. I'm adapting. So if I see something that's not working, we're going to say, hey, 
time critical, we're going to change what we're doing, we're going to make a new control, and we're going to go with this and see what happens. So this is, a, this is probably more important for all of you out there in the crowd for your day-to-day -day risk management. So time critical, you are, you are there, you're seeing things happening in real time, and you need to make decisions in order to minimize threats and hazards uh, for the Marines that you are leading. So the biggest thing is, what's different today? And that's kind of what I want you to ask yourself every single time you come to work, is what is different? Is the weather different? Am I driving a different vehicle? Am I doing something I don't normally do on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, Ask yourself that question, and you'll be starting that process. You'll be assessing and identifying those hazards uh, in your career, in your job, that will minimize the, uh, the chances of risk in the future. So that time critical process. So it goes by A, B, C, D. All right, so I want you to assess, assess situation. I want you to be balanced your resources. What, what options do you have? Uh, C, communicate. Uh, talk to the people who are in charge of you. Talk to people who are, who are following you. Uh, make sure everyone knows what the risks are, what your intentions are, and what the plan is. And then D, do, do your plan, and then debrief it, figure out what worked, what didn't work, and then reevaluate it, and come back to reassess. Once again, this is what you're gonna do every single day. Right, this is what you do inherently, you don't, you don't realize you're doing it, but you're doing it every single time you come to work. More of the same, you know, basically, a, B, C, D. Assess the risks and what you're doing that day. Take your resources, take your options. Utilize those benefits, those resources to minimize the risks you incur every day. Communicate your intentions and plans and then do your plan. If it doesn't work, start back over. All right, in the summary, so everyone in the Marine Corps is human. Uh, human error is present in what we do. You're gonna make mistakes. You are going to come across uh, failures and risks and threats and hazards when people are going to get hurt and people, things are going to happen. The moral of the story is realize that utilize risk management in your day-to-day -day jobs to minimize the severity and the probability of those threats. And then a challenge to so everyone here, or everyone here who is an NCO or above, if you lead Marines, uh, it is on you to have engaged leadership and utilize risk, man risk management. Um, so utilize those risk assessment matrices. matrices um, they literally plan for on duty and off duty. Like I said before, seven Marines have died already in the last seven days. Uh, off duty, just going home, driving without seatbelts, driving motorcycles, doing things they weren't planning for, driving in bad weather. Um, talk to your Marines, lead them, be engaged, utilize for risk management. Um, with that, any questions? Thank you, appreciate it.